How would you describe states' approaches now to implementing the health law? There's a, a variety of ways they're looking at it. Could you talk about what your experiences have been on that? Sure. We're working uh, with about a dozen states, and they fall, I'd say, into two camps. One, working very, very hard with a real strong vision of what they want to set up to implement uh, by October 1st, 2013, which is only uh, less than 18 months away. Others that uh, are planning, they're preparing, uh, they're waiting to see, in fact, uh, if it's implemented after the Supreme Court decision, which is expected to be announced in June and or the election in November. Uh, and then there are states, frankly, we're not working with uh, that are pretty much um, waiting to see if this go away. What are some of the biggest obstacles that you see, as you mentioned, the waiting on the Supreme Court ruling, if the law is upheld, uh, will states be ready to implement this? What are some of the in problems they're encountering with exchanges, enrollment, that sort of thing? Well, you know, it's important uh, uh, initially to distinguish between exchanges and the many, many other elements of this law. So um, will they be ready? I think it's a challenge. Uh, I think some of the states that are trying to drive for October 1, 2013, recognize that timing is a real challenge. And so that's one reason that uh, CMS has created this kind of fallback option of a partnership where states can do some things towards implementing exchange but rely on the federal government to do the bulk, at least until they're ready to implement. Um, but there are many other elements that they're moving forward with, uh, including new eligibility and determination systems uh, that span Medicaid and CHIP as well as the exchange tax credits uh, and getting ready to expand Medicaid eligibility. Do you think if the law is upheld and if President Obama were elected for a second term that states would be, there's been some discussion that they're, they may delay implementation because so many states are struggling with these issues. Do you see that as a possible scenario? You know, I, I think it makes some sense, but I'm not sure that there's legislative, and I'm not a lawyer, whether there's legislative authorization uh, to do that. So if that requires an amendment to the legislation, I think in the current context, you know, that's problematic. If the Supreme Court strikes down the health law, what elements uh, of state preparation do you think would remain, would continue in the absence of a federal law? So there's a couple of different ways the court could rule against. Um, and one is simply to um, eliminate the mandate. Uh, another is to eliminate the mandate and some very closely tied provisions of Title I, and a third is to uh, actually strike down the entire act. Um, and they're very different answers to your question, depending on which. So <laughs> which one would you like me let's to say strikes it? down. Let's say we, they strike down the whole law, or perhaps maybe strike down the mandate, because those seems to be the two, two scenarios that could move forward. So I think uh, they're striking down the entire law is less, much less problematic, uh, much less probable than striking down the mandate. And I've begun to talk to people in insurance companies and states and uh, vendor organizations uh, about what happens if the entire law is struck down. And I am struck by the lack of sort of anticipation of what that would mean. People are aware that there are huge problems. <laughs> There are many things that have been implemented already in terms of insurance uh, coverage and uh, uh, Medicare payment policies and affordable care, uh, accountable care organizations and so forth, um, the authorization for which would be undercut. And so it seems like Congress would have to step in to at least preserve some things that it wants to see continue without the Affordable Care Act, and that becomes, again, problematic. In the more limited circumstance, where there's simply a, um, an elimination of the mandate, that was just one tool to reform the insurance market. And so I think there's most of the Affordable Care Act remains in place, and especially increase in subsidies through exchanges for lower income folks and or through Medicaid. And, and a big piece of the Affordable Care Act is the expansion of coverage through public subsidies. That will continue and uh, states uh, will find workarounds, the uh, ways to work around the loss of the individual mandate.